What's up, everybody, and welcome in to the Backliners Podcast, Agro and Barracuda, as per usual. Excuse me, I should say the Olympus Bolts Hunter, Barracuda. Hello, that's me. I am Barracuda. That's him. Oh, I'll I gotta talk Olympus to the Bolts. prediction guys. I still got the little Renegades logo here. We needed a we need a little uh, we need an Olympus Bolts logo. Oh, true. In that, I didn't even know that was there. Honestly, well, there it is. It'd been there, and now we're gonna have to get a change. So sorry to the prediction guys for making them do a little bit more work. Uh, welcome into the Backliners. If you haven't been here before, uh, I don't know why this is the episode that you got here, but thanks for hey, stopping a by. Late the party. A little bit. You've missed a couple eps. Uh, this is going to all be episode. 61 30 no that's not how oh. math works bear hold on let me oh. Oh, i think i just showed that uh on my screen well maybe i didn't who knows um let's see how many episodes we have here shall we videos we've been doing this for a while backliners like this is gonna be episode 38 uh 38 so uh you know it's been you, you missed out on a couple but they've all been good so you have lots of time to go back uh and mm-hmm. and listen if you uh, aren't new around here, then you know that we're talking SPL rosters today. It was supposed to be announced yesterday <laughs> and then come in and do it. But, hey, I mean, sometimes, hey, that's just how it be. No, no, it's, it's Look, that's how it goes. It's been so painful not being able to talk about any of this for so long, man. Especially every time you stream. like Yep. You have to watch everything you're saying, and you can't hint at anything. And then Vin and Last are really duo queuing for like a month and a half. Dude, now. everyone like, was duo queuing with everyone like that was on their team. Like I feel yeah. like I can't tell because if it's because I know everything that's that's happening behind the scenes, or if it is obvious to everyone else. Like Scary D playing jungle in every in every ranked game. Yarkor like, only playing ADC. Yarkor only playing ADC. That kind of stuff. Uh, but Barra. I think you do deserve some credit. You didn't leak rosters this time around. I've only leaked one roster, bro. Okay, well, that one. was... One. But that then was you an... I- eight. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but your one leak was an iconic roster leak, dude. It was so good because of the pure fear that was in your eyes immediately <laughs> afterwards. Like, it was perfect. I love yeah. that roster leak, man. I still remember my face right after saying it. Like, oh, the basket I, has his driver's license. I loved it, dude. What a great mm. roster leak, man. That was that was Pain. So good. That was so good. All right, let's get into it. Um, so here's here's what we wanted to talk to you guys about. Obviously, there was a lot of drama behind the scenes and roster apocalypse this year was extra wild. Um, mm-hmm. but we aren't going to talk about it here on this podcast because uh, I can tell you that as part of the official um, like SPL content, I'm trying to get something centered around that. We kind of want to let that be the focal point for it. Feels a little mm-hmm. bit weird to just put it out here on the podcast without, you know, we're going to be getting everyone's perspective, and I think that just makes more sense. So that Ross Apocalypse behind-the-scenes talk will be here eventually, but it's not going to be here on the podcast. What we are going to be talking about, though, is all eight of these rosters and, of course, the names and logos, uh, <laughs> which has really dominated the conversation, I feel like. Uh, yeah. Barra, do you want to start with you guys, or do you want to, like, I'm on the SmiteProLeague.com website here. I could go mm-hmm. Same. left to right. Okay, let's just go left to right on here. That, I think that Atlantis sense, Leviathans? Then. The Atlantis Leviathan. Okay. So bef- before, uh, before we get into the roster, wh- how are you feeling about this team uh, aesthetically? Really cool, honestly, but a little long. I think the team name, like, how do you chant this, right? It's, it's just, a little long. It's a little long. It's such a mouthful. But Leviathan, like you can't do that. Yeah. You can, you know, we there's gonna be some nicknames coming through. You know, like there, I'm sure fans are creative. They'll come up with something. Yeah, are you gonna cheer Atlantis? Could do. That's that's easy enough. That's True. that's nice that's and right. like punchy. You know. Mm-hmm. That's that's the way it's gonna be. What's gonna be the in-game name? Is it gonna be the whole name, or is it just gonna be like Leviathans? Mm, I'm not sure. It's okay. a good question. Um, for those of you who aren't uh, caught up on the rosters, this Atlantis Leviathans team is mostly comprised of last year's Sanguine roster, though there is a switch up. So no Netrioid on mm-hmm. this roster. Instead, it's Yarkor ADC, Rongyu support, Shinto mid, Panatom jungle, and a rookie addition in julio over there in that solo lane julio Mm -hmm. uh spanish i believe so um shouldn't be any sort of language barrier there 
Uh, team, the overall uh, talk, the scuttlebutt, if you will, which I will, <laughs> around... What a great word. We don't use I that know, word. That was, that was a really good word. Like, come on. <laughs> the scuttlebutt around this roster <laughs> is that no one seems to think they're going to do as well as I thought that they would be perceived to do. I mean, this Sanguine roster, that four out of five, mm-hmm. were first seed in the regular season during phase one last year. You've got a lot of, of good performances from them in phase two. I think the only thing that would concern me about this roster is how poorly they played at the playoff events and, and at the, mm-hmm. the big moments. But other than that, what makes pe- you know people are putting them fifth, sixth in a regular season play, and I just don't see how that happens. I mean, this team proved that they're a good regular season team last year. Yeah, I think they are going to be a top team, and I think they're going to be a top four team. Mm. I don't know if I can comfortably put them top three or top two. Sure. Um, but I think they're going to be top four. I think Julio's really good. My, my biggest question mark is your core. Obviously, it's every time it's a roll swap, just yep. a question mark. You, I, I assume um, you played against him at least a little bit in in, uh, in ranked. Have you gotten a chance? I haven't played against him once, actually. Oh, you're He's still in those baby games, huh? Okay. <laughs> He's been slamming the night cues. Uh-huh. I've been slamming the morning cues. I played six hours with DS1 yesterday. And... I'm sorry. Are you doing okay? Do you want to talk or what? Okay. Not going to lie. I didn't treat... I literally talked about it on stream. I was like, this is not my practice today. This is purely mental practice. This is True. to see if I can outlast him. Mm. Once he got out of the queue, me and Ghost played one more and we were done. Yep. Well, you got him. And then I found out he was still playing. He just got in a different game. And... Unlucky. Are you yeah, telling me played... you had six hours straight of DS1 on your same team? Uh, I think I got it. Or, like, a, in the same game, I should say. Six hours yeah, of him game. in the same game. And he was on my team, like, nine out of ten games. And not even once you didn't, oh, I've got to go to the bathroom, chat. Guess I got to <laughs> miss this cue. Oh, chat, I really need some water. Or, man, my tummy is grumbling. My dogs are barking. I need to get a snack, like... You didn't hit him with any of those? No, pure mental practice. Wow. Pure mental practice. You're stronger bro. than I am, man. It's It was rough. It took me back to the SSG days of losing every game in a double block. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And, uh, yeah, so back to rosters. I think right. this team's actually going to be pretty good. I think they're going to have a slower ramp up than last year. But I do think they will be good by, I would say, mid-season. But I also think it depends on how the meta works around them and if they can shape the meta to their picks. Yeah, I think... I think they struggled every time the meta shifted. Yes, depending on what the meta is, is going to be big for this team. The, I think Yark... I've gotten very few reservations about Yarkor in ADC. I think, despite all of the hype that Shinto got last year, and a lot of it deserving... I think mm-hmm. Yarkor was Sanguine's best player last year. I think that guy is nuts. I don't know why he would roll swap out of solo lane, to be honest with you, because I think he was one of the best solo laners and one of the most impactful solo laners in the whole game. So mm-hmm. I'm a little bit surprised to see him roll swap, but if he can bring that same level to ADC that he did in solo, I think he's going to be really good. And I think Julio is going to slot in and immediately be a, at very least, middle of the pack solo laner. Uh, right mm-hmm. away. I think he's that good. So uh, I've got some pretty high hopes for this team. I'm surprised at how little hype they are getting uh, as a squad. I think a lot of people just with sour uh, sour tastes in their mouth after the world's performance. Yeah, them. that's what I was going to say. I think it's just people are just viewing this team as their world's performance, which in my opinion, they are way better than their world's performance. Agreed. Um, all right, next up, it's the Camelot Kings. As uh, again, before we get into the roster, Barra, give me the, the breakdown on the name and logo. Kings is cool. Camelot's a little weird for me. Um, logo, cool-ish, but I don't know. I like. It's not my favorite. I like this one. I mean, you got to go purple for the royalty. You know, that's mm-hmm. that's pretty important. Yeah. I think. Yeah, everyone. Someone in chat says one Camelot king. That doesn't bother me at all. Uh, I think if you're gonna go with the kings. The Camelot Kings makes the most sense. It's got a good alliteration, even though it isn't, you know, it's it's CK. It sounds like an alliteration, so. You know what? I'm mm-hmm. high on this team name. I've decided. I like it. Uh, there you go. It. 
All right, and here's the roster from a Biggie is the coach. Oh, I didn't mention for the Leviathans, uh, Oxy is still their coach, just like he was for Sanguine last year. Biggie is coaching the five of Netroid, ADC, Genetics, Big Man Tings, Captain Twig, and Variety in the solo lane. Uh, this team, it's a weird one, Barra. Yeah. What are, what are your thoughts? Uh, they're all really good. And I think they will mesh well together, but I look at them as a team that is purely playing for team fights. Mm -hmm. I don't view them as a team that's going to like really run you down early, play for pressure like a ghost team. I view them as kind of like a sanguine slash rate. I mean, I guess I can't really say that sanguine slash radiance. Well, I mean, they've got some um, radiance player. They've got a radiance player, and they've got a sanguine player. Well, like in like 2021, I guess like. Anyways, I view them as like a low pressure team that won't really run you over, but they will just play for a lot of team fights. Um, yeah, yeah, that would be my main concern as well. I mean, Twig going back to the jungle is an interesting thing because I'm interested to see how much his play style has changed by being with Mike and, and Panda over these last two years. Uh, because Twig, I think, could bring that ghost like identity to this team. If, if mm -hmm. they let him be the guy for them. Mm -hmm. And I think Twig could be that dude for this squad. I'm, I'm a little nervous about these side lanes, though, Barra. I mean, Netroid, I think, one of the best individual hunters in the league. But how well is he going to mesh with Genetics, who I understand his situation and uh, playing on high ping last year. But... Outside of the creative Horus plays, I wasn't really impressed with, with what he brought. Obviously, mm -hmm. it was a bad team situation. There was There's mm -hmm. a whole list of excuses. But I think it's also unfair to completely write off that performance because uh, of those excuses. In Variety last year, had his up moments, but overall, I did not was not that impressed with him mm -hmm. throughout the course of last year. So I think Tings is rock solid in the mid lane. I think I would put the most stock in Netroid and then Twig after that. What are what are these side lanes really going to be able to do, I think, is my main concern for Camelot Kings. Yeah, I think trying to draft like the pressure comps or playing into pressure is going to be a little hard for this team. Um, I think they can play through mid relatively easy through BMT. I think he's disgusting. but Yeah, he's really good. Also, I think that their front line is going to be really good in team fights between Harry Genetics and Twig. Like, if they can kind of figure out their shot calling slash leader, because mm -hmm. I don't know if Twig's a leader in the jungle, but he seems like he would be. Um, I feel like their team fights will be very laid out well, and they'll know what is happening through Genetics and Harry, which I feel like those two will work really well together, and I think Twig will work well with them. And then Netroid BMT, in my opinion, is a really solid backline. Yeah, I think the backline's really, really solid. Uh, I'm not as convinced as you on the front line, but mm -hmm. I think they could be really, really good. Like, I could see this team being top three potential, or I could see them... I, I don't think they're going to lose a ton of games. Like, I don't think they're going to be bottom two necessarily, but they could be this weird, like, floating in the middle sort of team. <laughs> That's kind of funny because I was going to say top three or bottom three. <laughs> yeah, like, they're just like, eh, who knows? Who knows with this squad? I don't know. Bitcoin flippy. Bitcoin flippy, for sure. All right, on to the next team. It's the Jade Dragons. Look, I'm a green stand. Green's my favorite color. But this, t I mean, come on. This team logo is clean. I like the name, the Jade Dra I think the Jade Dragons is probably just the best name across all the teams. I, I rate it pretty highly. Best name, best logo, worst team. <laughs> oh, unlucky. Uh, yeah, just, I expect this team to just be eighth all year. Yeah, Plus, they're going to you know, really struggle. Listen to this. Really... Listen to this absolute <laughs> trash can amalgamation of players. First of all, you've got Kabam, <laughs> arguably the best coach to ever do it, coming back into the coaching role for this squad. And good luck with the likes of Panda Cat, Polar Bear Mike, Heroin, Sam for Soccer, and Fine OK. Uh, really bad. Really bad. Really bad. All jokes aside, this is just obviously the number one team coming in, right? Yep. Like, they, I think that Twig obviously made a lot of strides towards the back end of 
uh, last year, his phase two performance. He, you can make the argument that he was the MVP for this team during that phase two. Um, this team got better in the off season. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I think that Hurrowind is going to slot really, really well into the squad. I think Kabam being there is going to be really big for them as well. Uh, and the rest of them I are mean, just arguably the best players in their roles. Kabam was already a really disgusting coach, and you're giving him a perfect foundation to work with. <laughs> yep. So uh, a little unlucky for the rest of the teams in the SPL. Um, also, I think Hurry is a player that is only as good as his front line, and he gets the best front line SPL. Yep. So I think Hurry is going to have his best year. Yes. Um, since I think the Dignitas team he was on with Trix and Kivo and Harry, I think. Yep. Which that was when they were like completely popping off and playing really well. And he had a great um, year that year. Yep. And I think he's going to have another stellar year. I mean, there's really not much to talk about on this team. Like they're going to be number one. They're going to be insanely good the entire year. They're going to be really good at Worlds. They're going to be really good at playoffs. Like, Mike has been saying, <laughs> yeah. Mike has been saying that he might mess around and make this his worst year ever. So, maybe that'd be fun. Maybe that's the rest of the the league's hope, at least the very beginning uh, mm -hmm. of the season. You know, obviously, uh, even with a, a roster that looks that stacked, things can go wrong. But something tells me nothing's going to go wrong over for, for the Jade. I Dragons. feel like if anything goes wrong, Kabam will literally put band aids all over everything. Yes, Kabam. For my money, Kabam goat coach. So. I just think that this team is like, this is, if you don't like the, the big threes being formed in the NBA, like this is it, for me, like this team is the, the warriors with Kevin Durant, bro. Like it's just, mm -hmm. it's just over. It, it, it feels like it in some ways. Um, yep. All right. Now on to this uh, amalgamation of dab, handsome dab, dab. gentlemen, the Olympus bolts. Now, Barra, when you guys got the bolts name, were you pleased? Were you disappointed? Mm -hmm. what, what do you um, think about it here? Let's see, I... Yeah, the only two I didn't want were Solar Scarabs and Tartarus Titans. Okay. Um, so any of the other six that were available was awesome to me. And i not crazy about Olympus, but I like Bolts a lot. I think Bolts is a strong word, a cool word, <laughs> and it feels, it feels good, you know? It feels nice. Like, it's there's, the, like... there's the headline right there. Bolts is a strong word, a good word. <laughs> Bolts. You can't say bolts like in a cowardly way. It's bolts. bolts. Some nuts and bolts. You, you tried to do it, but it still didn't work. It's true. It's true. Well, you have the nuts and the bolts uh, on mm -hmm. this roster is the way I'm going to put it. Uh, it it's Roe coming back as coach. Basically, it's the same Renegades roster from last year that you know and that you love, but a change in the solo lane. It's Haddix over there instead mm -hmm. of Solo Retrol or Variety. Um, talk to me about the addition of Haddix. How big do you think, uh, how big do you think he is for the team? I think Haddix, I mean, I troll a lot about it on stream, but I think Haddix is going to be a top three solo laner very quickly. I think his mechanics are literally disgusting. Yep. And his laning phase is literally disgusting. Like every time I watch this guy stream and I, it doesn't happen a lot, but I am like with my streams, because everyone's like trolling or whatever on their stream. Mm -hmm. With Haddix, I'm literally impressed every single time I watch his stream. I'm like, that was a good play. I like, it's just that, that impressed feel. I don't know how to describe it, but it's just like, there's something about those kind of plays. It's, it's not like, I don't know. It's, it's different, I would say. Yeah, like the he, level uh, of skill and mechanics. Haddix is nuts, man. He's re he's a really, really good player. I think he's definitely overdue for his SPL shot. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that he is going to make a, a big difference for your squad. Uh, how, how important do you think it is? I think you're going to be a little bit biased here, as you should be. Mm -hmm. But how important do you think it is to to stay together, you know, four people from the same roster as last year do you think that gives a lot of people you know reading the, the smite pro thread and all that kind of stuff a lot of people seem to be putting a lot of stock in four of you sticking together how mm -hmm. important do you actually think that is i think it's really important because last year was a building year for this team um i think we struggled a lot throughout the year with a lot of different behind the scenes problems 
And I think going into this year, I don't think we'll have any of those behind the scenes problems. I think Haddix will literally fit in and instantly do what we need him to do, which I think he'll be a leader as well as work really well with Jake and Lass in the front line. Um, I think me and Vin need to step it up in team fights, and I think that will happen through the front line that we have got now. Um, mm. I don't think we'll struggle as much as we did last year. I expect us to be stronger and win a lot more sets than we did last year. More than 11, so, huh? That's yeah, the, that's that the goal. That's a rough number to find out. <laughs> um, I was going to ask you how many, uh, you know, maybe not how many set wins, but where do you expect to be uh, at least through phase one? I would say I would be happy with a top four. Like sure. I would, I would be completely satisfied with the top four. Um, cause I think we still have a bit of learning to do a bit of things we need to work on. Um, but definitely starting at a way better spot than we did last year. hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, there were a lot of question marks around this team last year. I mean, mm -hmm. no one knew if Jake was going to be good at all, uh, at the SPL mm -hmm. level last year. Obviously now it's just about avoiding that sophomore slump. Um, yep. And, and I, you know, last year, I think that when we talked about the team, it was a lot of, if Lasberg got these leads, he was very good, but whenever he didn't mm -hmm. get those leads, I think he really struggled. That for me is still the biggest question mark. Um, but if those, if that get, if those two things happen where Jake is continues to grow as a player and doesn't regress as, is what often happens for players in their second year a little bit, just mm -hmm. for temporary sake. Um, and then if Lasberg can continue to grow as a jungler, uh, obviously you guys showed what you can do come world's time. So I mm -hmm. uh, think a lot and of the, the bolts fans are hoping for it. And I have a lot of faith in me and Jake duo still running it down. Yep. And a lot of new duo like, lanes to go up against. I'm very excited about that. There's a lot of <laughs> fresh meat in the duo <laughs> lane. <laughs> Your core I'm sure is very much looking forward to his first, uh, Olympus Bolt Scrim, huh? That first purple buff spawn, bro. You already know. <laughs> it's going to be going in, dude. It's going to be going in. Join Ignition Casino, your go-to destination for the best online poker, table games, progressive slots, and much more. Sign up with the promo code IGNITION777 and deposit using Bitcoin to get 25 free spins on 777 Deluxe. All right, here's the roster that I, I think is also getting a lot of well-deserved hype, not just because of who's on mm -hmm. their roster, but the Oni Warriors logo. It, it's, oh, very cool. It's very cool, but here's what I'll say. I don't know how much I like having a team named the Warriors. I obviously, like, I don't hate it. I'm not super upset about it, but, like, I'm talking about Warriors on the, on the cast a lot. You know what True. I mean? I'm saying, like, these Warriors are owning the back yeah. line, or the Warriors aren't bringing enough. Now I'm going to have to change my vernacular a little bit. Oni is also an item. Mm. And the Oni Fury. And the Oni... Bro. This team's going to cause me some problems, do? bro. They're going to cause me some problems. O-W. Ow. Ow. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Listen, that's what everyone is saying when they see this roster. They're going, ow! Because it's looking good. Chuckles is the coach. Vote ADC. Neil Ma support. Dardes mid. Cuvo Fred jungle. Nika solo. Basically, last year's uh, SSG combined with last year's PK. Mm -hmm. This team is nuts, right? I mean, mm -hmm. this team is is really really good. Do you have any concerns about Neil and Vote meshing together, or, or Fred and Dardes, or Fred and Nika? Because for me, I don't really think I do. Mm, it depends. Because in my opinion, a lot of what happened last year was due to Cherry. Mm -hmm. I think the games that Cherry was able to pop off, those team fights just looked different than the ones he didn't. So yes. I don't know if, if Kibo is supposed to fill that role or what role he's going to be filling. Because a lot of times, a lot of their drafts were full late game, like zero pressure, we're just going to out team fight you. Yep. And I think with Neil and Cuba, it brings a lot more aggression and a lot more early game. Yep. Because uh, I think Cuba and Neil can go either way, in pressure or late game. Um, I think it's going to open up a bit of God Pools in Nika, Vote, and Dardes. Uh, I think they're going to be able to play a little more aggressive picks and the more run-it-down picks. Um, I just think they're going to be a 
interesting team. They're definitely going to be a top team, don't get me wrong. Yeah. Um, but I don't know how quickly they'll all mesh together. But yeah. I would be shocked if they're below top three. Yeah. I think I, I think your point is very valid that Cherio is obviously a huge driving force for this team. But I don't mm. think you could have gotten a better player in that void than Neil. Like, Neil is literally the perfect guy to put in that spot. And Raffer uh, obviously did a lot of things very well, but I think when you compare Neil to Raffer head-to-head on who's going to make a bigger impact, it's really not that close in my mm-hmm. mind. And Neil is going to – especially in the types of picks that Neil wants to play versus what Raffer wanted to play, I think Vote and Dardas are going to have more room in team fights than they know what to do with. Uh, the Mm -hmm. vast majority of the time and last year it was really Cherio's job to create that with Nika so maybe there is going to be blink in and like start a fight with Kali right like that was kind of the the team dynamic that is not going to happen I think Neil is is you know right up there with with I think Mike is is the best support in the game right now but Mm -hmm. Obviously, Neil and what he brings is so important, and and it's exactly what this team needed because there was going to be a power void for this team because Cherio was so important in terms of comms Mm -hmm. and team direction and the way we wanted to play. I think this team, uh, there's a real chance that Dardes and Vote look even better, and they already were arguably the best, like competing for the best players in their positions. So Mm -hmm. that that is wild. I can't wait to see what Dardes and Vote are going to do with this uh, with this front line they have this year. They're going to be really good. Um, agreed, agreed, by the way, that there's no way they're outside of top three. Um, okay. Solar Scarabs. This team, uh, a lot of hate, I think, online for this team name. And I'll be honest, I don't get it. I think this team name owns. Yeah, it kind of grew on me. Um, we were going over the names. I kind of hated it. But every day I look at it and I'm kind of envious I, you yeah. wish you were the scarabs. I mean, it's just, it's just cool. Hashtag I like the logo. I like the name. Can I say hashtag get bugged is like, it it owns so hard. I love it. Yeah, I don't know if it owns that hard. Maybe no, that it. absolutely owns. Every time you just own someone, get bugged. Like, come on, man. It's so it troll. Like you're insulting them from like a Disney movie. Exactly. That's why it's funny, man. Oh. Come on, yeah. I mean, get getting like they're just getting own, when, whenever you own someone, they just got bugged. That's all there is to it. Their logo's sick. Their colors are good. The team name is solid. I don't understand why there was so much hate initially for this team roster. I don't understand. With the roster or the or the the, the team name. Oh, excuse okay. me. The roster. I understand why te- why people are a little bit down. We'll talk about that. They've got a lot of rookies here on this squad. It's Slaney coaching Zapman leading the squad of inbound baronic layers and solo or troll uh a lot of unproven talent here of course between mm-hmm. layers and baronic as true rookies solo or troll his redemption arc basically after mm-hmm. a, a tough year last year bobby after being considered the low end of supports uh getting his shot here with Zapman man in the duo lane so that should be exciting for him the box boy is kind of bringing in zap and solo or troll on the sides the, the number one thing that stands out to me, though, Barra, is that th- this is a lot of different play styles kind of being brought mm-hmm. together. You know, obviously, Bobby and Layers and Baronic should have some synergy. They won a world championship on console together. But Solar Patrol is a type of player that he can win you games if you give him the proverbial ball. But that requires giving him the ball. You know, he, wa- he wants to play around his side of the map. He wants to play his a little bit oddball picks. Mm-hmm. Zatman is used to not being the focal point for his team. He really wasn't any of the last two years. It's been really centered around Paul in that mid lane. So he's used to not being the headliner, so to speak. But, I mean, let's call a spade a spade. Baronic is not Paul. So something's got to change in that back line. He's got to take more of a carry role than I think he has these last two years. I think there's a lot of question marks about this team coming in. Yeah, I think for me it's all question marks. Um, yeah. I think they will be a bottom end team. Um, I think. I mean, in my opinion, with the rest of the teams in the SPL, I don't know if they can be a top end team. I'd be very shocked if they are. Um, it's just question marks across the board for me. Like, literally between Sot, like, Sot's question mark, Layers question mark, Bronx question mark, Inbounds question mark, 
Zap, in my opinion, is on a question mark. He just needs to revert his play style back to being a selfish carry. Yeah, but it's been and, two years, right? Like, that's a long yeah. time. Of, 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 and it's but, two years of winning in that time, right? Yeah. I mean... Because he's going to want to change. He needs to change. We both agree on that. And then uh-huh. it's going to be, oh, well, we're losing. And let's be real, it probably won't be because of Zapman. But that's hard to see whenever you're in the middle of it. So... Mm-hmm. Well, maybe I just should go back to what I was doing when we were winning, but I don't think that's the winning formula for this team either. So that that seems like a hard, you know, beam to balance. Mm-hmm. I do think Layers and Saw have a lot of potential to play through their side of the map, but it's just, it's for me, a big question mark of how well they're going to do. Yeah. Um, if they can't play through solo. I'm not sure about Baronic. Um... Uh, team teams are just a giant question mark for me. Yeah, I mean Baronic obviously one of the best uh, mid laners ever on Xbox, a, a total beast there. Mm-hmm. But you look at his performances in SCC coming over to play on PC. They it, it did not look to me like he was ready for this jump, but it he also wasn't playing with his core teammates that he's really comfortable with. So mm-hmm. um, maybe he'll find some some renewed form with layers and inbound here. Look, I think it'd be really awesome if this team absolutely popped off uh, Mm -hmm. and just owned, but I think everyone is kind of expecting this team to to pull up the rear to be the caboose for a little bit. And, Mm -hmm. uh, and that's where I expect them for now as well, but excited to see what they're going to grow into for sure. Yeah. I mean, it's a new map, new season, new everything. So if you are going to make a team like this, there's literally been, no better chance than now, in my opinion, because everyone's kind of starting around the same... F- oh, well, I mean, some teams are obviously better than others, but I think it is a good idea and a good time to start a team like this. Yeah, agreed. I'm rooting for him, for sure. Hope, Hopefully the boy uh, Baronic can can pop off, because I think that'll be fun to watch. Um, mm-hmm. All right, next up, it's the Tartarus Titans. This is a team name that you said you didn't want, Barry. I didn't really like it. I just don't like the word Tartarus. It just reminds you of, like, Tartar stuff sauce? you have in your teeth. Oh. I was going tartar. <laughs> well, but, yeah, but yeah. tartar sauce as well. Wait, is that is tartar the stuff that's in your teeth as well? I thought it was. It's tartar sauce. I know that. I'm just going to Google it here. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, it is. It's, little... it's still tartar. Why did they name tartar sauce the same thing after what's in your teeth? <laughs> right? Like, that's bad branding by tartar sauce. Yeah, well, we got to go back to that guy and see what's up. Yeah, what is up with this? Hold on, I'm going to look up why it's called tartar sauce. Yeah, I'm just not a fan of... Tartarus is just not a cool word. I love Titans. I think Titans is a really cool name, but Tartarus just brings it completely down for me. I just... Not a fan of Tartarus. Um, logo cool, by the way. I like the logo a lot. Um, yeah, logo is cool. Logo is cool. Uh, it's the name for tartar sauce, in case you were curious is derived from the French sauce tartare. That's with an E. So I think we might have just gotten a little screwed over here on the on the French to English translation, that it ends mm-hmm. up being the same thing. They should have just kept the E, like man. Eng- uh, like, do you think it's just that Americans are so lazy that mm-hmm. they don't want to... They don't want to add that extra... Like, it sounds too pretentious, you know? Probably. Tartare, you know? It's like, I, mean, I don't think we can say that with, like, our pinky's not out, basically. That's a good point. I think that Makes would be tough. Feel too fancy. It would be uh, it would be a lot to do without uh, without putting the pinky up. All right, but mm-hmm. for the Tartarus Titans, this team <laughs> coached by Cherio, uh, ADC Cyclone Spin support Aurora mid Paul Jungle Scary D and Solo yep. Lane Benji. So this team, how many World Championships do they have between all of them? This is one. This is two. This is two. This is seven. one, and this is one. So, yeah, seven world championships between the five players. I mean, obviously a stacks roster in terms of talent, but mm-hmm. a lot it, it, a lot of... I still think there are a lot more question marks about this team than, than I've been seeing uh, online. Uh, everyone seems to just not be worried at all about Scary Jungle. I'm a yeah, little bit that's, worried. That's my biggest question mark. Um, I think Scary, disgustingly good player. Very good mechanics. Pops off when he needs to, but Jungle, just a completely different role. And yeah. like we said earlier, every time there's a, a role swap, there's always question marks about it. And 
some people pop off right in the beginning and then have a downward trend and then some people take a while to start ramping up and I don't know. We'll just see. I mean, he does have Paul to work with, and which I think is, in my opinion, is pretty important. Former teammate, obviously. Um, they already have the synergy from the last two, three years. Are we only playing together? Uh, um, yeah, at least two, right? Maybe. Th no, it's like two and a half. And I think having a role swap, if you're playing with someone you've been playing with for a long time, is really important. And he's joining a completely new team and role swapping. So I think. He kind of needs some sense of, like, foundation and some sense of home, I would say. Mm -hmm. I think Paul's a really good starting point for that. Um, I mean, the amount of individual skill on this team is through the roof. Yes. Like, literally, <laughs> I don't know. The amount of individual skills. It's just it's, it's nauseating. Crazy. It, it is absolutely nuts. But here, okay, I've got two main question marks. Number mm -hmm. one, Scary moving into the jungle. Obviously a question mark in its own right. But Scary is not the strongest communicator I've ever seen from, from watching and listening to some comms. Comms become much more important in jungle than they are mm -hmm. in the solo lane. So he's going to have to step up there, especially because Paul also traditionally not the strongest communicator coming out of the mid lane from my experience. So now you're mid jungle. How much are they really communicating? Now, obviously they've got a lot of synergy together, so maybe they don't need to communicate in that way, but map rotations is a huge thing you kind of need your mid and jungle to be doing a lot of talking in that way. Cyclone spin, not really sure how much he talks in a real team environment. Benji actually talks more than I think most people would expect for how quiet he usually is in content mm -hmm. and things like that. And Aurora, obviously a big talker, but Aurora is going to need to shoulder a lot of weight in terms of communication on this team. And that's not always easy to maintain that same level. And Aurora did not play to his level last year. I mean, mm -hmm. Radiance, despite looking good in a lot of these big moments individually for Aurora. I think it was his worst season in quite some time. Now I don't think he's washed or anything like that. I still think Aurora is one of the best players to ever touch the game and one of the best minds for the game, one of the best supports to ever play. I'd expect him to come back with a bounce back season, but it's kind of hard when I think he's going to have to shoulder a lot of the responsibility in terms of team comms. And a third thing that I just thought of is that both Paul and Cyclone Spin I was gonna bring that up. Yep. are very, very selfish backliners. And for yep. good reason, because those two are good enough to just outright win games instantly by themselves. Mm -hmm. But you can't have both of them doing that at the same time. Because yep. you've got to pick one. So who are you picking? If you're Benji and Scary and Aurora and Cherry on this team. Who are you picking to say, okay, we're playing through this guy come late game. We're worried about this guy come late game. And will the other player be able to adjust their play style, be able to not take it personally, you know, don't let that hurt your ego, anything like that. I don't think that's a given for this roster. Yeah, I think the most important thing for this team is their scrim environment and how effective they are able to use their practice. I think if they're able to change and be a little bit less selfish in the back line, I think they'll absolutely pop off. But, I mean, if Paul continues to play like his world performance, they have nothing to worry about. Yeah, was that <laughs> I mean, but that was God. playing with a team that knows how he plays and plays exclusively around him. True for two years, right? And, and Cyclone has been, has wanted to be the guy to be played around for the last like three years, and for, and for good reason because he just wins games when you play around him. Yeah, I think they're a bit of a question mark for me, but not too bad. I think they'll play well. Um. I, th there is a potential for Scary to get blamed, I think, a bit on this team. Yep. Um, which I'm a bit worried about, because I think everyone else, when you look at them on paper, like, obviously wouldn't be the issue, and then there's Scary Jungle, which I just don't want him to get, what's it, what's it called? Scapegoated. Scapegoated, yeah. I don't, I won't, I don't, don't want him to get scapegoated on this team. I think they'll need a bit of a ramp up process, but I think they'll be disgusting if they can figure out their way to team fight slash play the game yep agreed all right and on to our final roster to talk about here i think one of the best names and one of the best logos this would have been maybe my number one this would have been my, my, my number two choice i think behind the jade dragons if i were trying to get on a, uh, one of these teams valhalla valkyries this team name mm -hmm. owns and the logo is sick as well yeah i'm not as crazy about it as you are honestly 
Dude, this team Give name a, owns. I think it's like a bottom end team name for me and a bottom end logo. You're trolling, bro. I just I'm not crazy of like Valhalla Valkyrie. It's a long name. Uh, not crazy about the logo either. I don't like the way the words are like stacked on top of like a V. That's cool. What do you mean? That's it's uh, cool. The, it's all V, you know. Not not crazy about it. Sorry. It's I give right. it like a six or seven on my scale. Just a typical wrong Barra opinion. We need like a, a a bad Barra opinion alert that I can just like press on my keyboard and it just like oh here we go again you know like some sort of little oh, funky wow. thing that That's come guy. up. Uh, yeah, I've seen a lot of this. Like? Take uh, it's trefoils and I should have brought some because I have some and they're delicious. Uh, I've seen this take a lot. Uh, Valkyries are female warriors. It's cool, but not for an all guy team. I, I think that is that an ice cold take. Ice yeah, that is freezing very cold. Stupid take. Who cares? Valkyries are very cool warriors in Norse mythology. Yes, mm-hmm. they are women in mythology, but getting chosen to represent the Valkyries would be sweet. I think I think that's cool. That yep. that's all I'll have to say about that. Okay. That's if it's cool, but the name sucks. Sorry. Disagree. Uh <laughs> coached by Tigris, <laughs> Emilito Hunter, Raffer support, the old energy duo lane back together. Zero's mid, Johnny in the jungle, and Ducky in solo. What a weird uh, yep. amalgamation of a roster. But an exciting one. Um, here's my concern. It's all EU. And I think that the stereotype of EU players wanting to play slower uh, is still mostly true to this day. And I just think, for my personal opinion... That fast play is just better, and pressuring the map mm-hmm. early is just better, and sitting on your hands and waiting for teams to make mistakes is not the correct way to play smite. And I know that that uh, statement looks a little bit silly in the face of PK's run at Worlds, where they did exactly that. But as a team to throw like three times, exactly. I all you need is other teams to mess up, and uh, I would much rather uh, play something like Ghost play style, where it's it, the game is in my hands, and trust us to not make those mistakes. So. Uh, I'm a little bit worried about how this team is going to play the map, how aggressive they're going to be. And that's before we get into, is Johnny as good as advertised? I do think he's very good. His God pool needs a massive change before it's going to be ready for the SPL. Yeah, I would have a lot more faith in Johnny if he had an aggressive team around him. But I feel like they're not an aggressive team. No. No. Like, Zeros has never been an aggressive player, except when season two, when he played Thanatos mid, when you could rush tank boots and they were really OP. That was the last time Zeros was aggressive in his whole life in the early game. Uh, I do think that it, if you get to late game, this team could have the tools, but is this team just budget SSG from last year? Yeah, I, I kind of think so. I kind of think they might be. Like... I don't know. I yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I don't want to be like mean or anything, but I just sure. But it's don't an, think it's they're going to be a bro. top tier team. Yeah, they've got. They would have to surprise me. I think because yeah. I mean, Emilito, the most clutch player in like all of Smite for my money, just absolutely insane player when it comes to the big moments. Uh, did not play well last year. Did not play well in his last stint in the SPL. Raffer did play pretty well for for the majority of last year, but I think he was also surrounded by maybe the most talented other four players in the league. So how much is he going to be able to shoulder that burden himself? Zeros, notoriously a dude who you, it's his way or the highway. Is this mm-hmm. team going to fully buy in? Johnny, true rookie, plays only late game hyper carries at a high level from what I've seen. And then Ducky, who's been on a bottom-end SPL team his whole career, and you can say that Ducky has looked like the best player on that team, and that can be true, but he's still never been better than a 7th or 8th place solo laner, and he's got to prove that he can be on a team that's better than that. So, top to bottom, it's it, it's a lot of question marks for this team. Yeah, I, th- I just don't think that they're going to do that well. I mean, maybe I'm just judging them too much on paper, but... That's all we can do. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. I just think that against aggressive teams, they're going to struggle a lot and probably just get run over. Yep. Got to learn how to play just, the early game. Yeah, unless they just completely swap up everything. But even like 
going from aggressive things in scrims to aggressive things in comp like spl like when ghost is literally at every single one of your buffs on respawn three or four people ready to invade and they have all their cooldowns and they've already talked about the invade and how the invade's going to happen that's a different feeling yes that is a suffocating feeling of i can't do anything here are we defending the next one we'll talk about that when we get there but it's it's just different yeah i don't know how much tyrus is going to bring either yeah as a coach um question mark for me as well yeah um i think that's fair yeah i think it's just question marks across the board um i think they'll just need to work on pressure or playing against pressure to be good yeah i think also, if you're in Johnny's shoes, I feel I feel for the guy here because it's he has so. I, when was the last time a rookie had this much hype coming in around him uh, mm-hmm. into the league? I don't even think Paul uh, had that kind of. I think it was probably Paul. Actually, was the last time that there was this much talk about how good a player was in their region in the mm-hmm. SEC. Uh, Johnny deserves all he he deserves an SPL shot 1000%. This dude has dominated mm-hmm. Europe in the SEC jungle for a long time. But it has been a slow region that likes to let play slow and he, what is he's known for? Alquang, he's known for Kali, he's known for Baka. You know, a little bit of Kamazots comes to mind for him. Mm-hmm. Those are the gods that I think of when I think of Johnny and if you're picking Alquang, Kali, Baka, you better be dead ass Cherio. Like you have mm-hmm. to be Cherio in order to make yep. that work at this level. And it's it's an unrealistic expectation for him to be Cherio right away. And then the you know, we have so many questions about the rest of the team. Are they going to th- are they going to try and play the same meta? Are they going to set their own? I think as soon as you have this much hype coming in and then if he does end up struggling right away, how do you mentally bounce back from that? I, I'm a little worried for, for how Johnny is going to do if he doesn't pop off right away. This is also a team, in my opinion, where scrim environment and productive scrims are very important for this team. Yep. I think if they do not have a productive environment, they will stay a bottom-end team. But I think if they are able to work on their issues and talk through things, I think they will be very good. They've got potential, but- man. Also, I think Raffer is going to be a key, key point to this team. Yes. Because he just came from SSG, which played really well. And I think that they will, uh, as you said, budget SSG. I think they'll have the same similar play style. Um, so I think he'll be, I would say, right at home and comfortable with how they want to play the game and how they want to think about the game. Yep. Um, but as you said, you don't have Cherry. So we'll just see how they can deal against the pressure. Which, I don't know how important pressure is on this new map. I haven't scrimmed yet or anything like that. But pressure and smite, always been good. Yeah, it's just pressure is better, man. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I think that you should just be on people's buffs. And then they... Because you get farm and they don't. And that's pretty yep. important, it turns out. Uh, so, real quick, um, to to go over... I th- Maybe we just do one quick zoom out here at the very end of our expected top three... Maybe we just mm-hmm. stay on the positive end. Our expected top three. Uh, I'd say mine would be... I'd expect Jade Dragons, Oni Warriors, and... I'm going to say... Should I get a little spicy here, Barry? Should, how spicy uh, How spicy should I get with, the, mm, with this last I'm not one? going spicy, I don't think. You're not going spicy? So you're going Titans third, aren't you? You're going, mm-hmm. you, you're going Dragons, Warriors, Titans? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Well, then, for the sake of spice level alone, um, I'm going to say Dragons, Warriors, Leviathans. Hmm. That's what I'm going to go with. Spicy. Yeah. Well, sp- not that spicy. Not that spicy, spicy, but a little, you know, you taste it and you go, oh, like this isn't a- that spicy. And then it lingers, you know? it's Oh, it's got like a little a lingering. Frank's Red Hot spice. Yeah, I would say Frank's Red Hot is objectively spicy, it's but it's not there. like... It's not like, oh my god, that's so spicy. Yeah. You know? It's not overwhelmingly so. Bear, have, you've watched Hot Ones before, right? Mm-hmm. Very good show. Or YouTube series, I guess? Yeah, you, yeah I guess so. Yeah. Do you, what do you think it would take for us to have to do a Hot Ones-style show where we got the actual sauces and then actually did it? 
like together in the same room or yeah, what if we did it like as a i would love that that would be interesting wouldn't it i would absolutely love that i would i would do that for free maybe oh you're ruining my negotiation power here, Barrow. Uh, I need thousands and millions of dollars. I Come on, man. We can we can milk this for sure. I don't know. I literally just came up with the idea on the spot because we were talking about hot sauce, and then I was thinking maybe we could, you know, make sure we hit some sort of sub goals and or something like World? that. Yeah, something like that. You know, we can get in, we can get a little charity involved, or we could just be selfish and take the money for ourselves. And who's gonna be that upset about it? Like, not me. I don't know. I'm down to set a goal. I'm 100% down. Okay. I'm trying to move into a house soon, Barra. I need some sub goals oh. to hit here, okay? I, well, that's, let's get that down payment, baby. That, that's right. That's that's what we need. Ooh, episode 50. That's a good idea. Maybe we do a, maybe nope. we do an episode 50 special. Um, all right. Thanks for, thanks for watching, everybody. We do have to do a question, uh, and I thought of it ahead of time this time around. Um, I hope we haven't done this. I actually don't know if we have. Tell me. Maybe someone in chat will remember. Um Barra, what is your go-to Chinese order? General So's, easy. Really? Easy, easy, easy. I love General So's. Right. I, you're I not even like, that. you're what? not even, you're not, your eyes aren't straying. You're not wandering. You're not thinking, no. oh, that sounds better than General So's Instantaneous right now. General So's chicken, fried rice or white rice. I don't care either way. Both are delicious. Um, I mean, it's a little bit of vegetables, doesn't need a crazy amount, I'll be offended if it's literally just chicken and rice, that's mm -hmm. also really cool. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, General Tso's, all day easy. I have one that's just like that, I, I almost never stray, though we did tonight, um, mm -hmm. because they, this place did not have sesame chicken. I'm a sesame chicken man. Very good. I Very love good. sesame chicken, and here's why, because I also like General Tso's chicken, but my mm -hmm. wife cannot handle one red pepper worth of spice like you know on the menu that's got like you Unlucky. know one through five <laughs> yeah dog if we cook with pepper <laughs> and she tastes it she goes oh there's too much pepper it's spicy i like can't black you know, pepper yeah black pepper man it's it's tough out here okay that's, that's different it, it does hit, so i so if we're getting okay wait here's another question do you and Destiny get when you're ordering Chinese? Do you just order one ses or like one General Tso's and then split it, or does she get something separate? Separate. We usually share. We usually just go one. Really? Because it is too much for one person in one sitting. Yeah, but and, you have leftovers. Yeah, and it's we guess cheap we, as balls. We don't do leftovers very much, I guess, and that's what, what because we both want sesame chicken. Like sesame chicken is just we good. Get two orders of sesame chicken. Maybe we should. Here's the key, by the way, to a good sesame chicken chat. It can't be too sweet. It's obviously going to be very sweet. That's the draw of sesame chicken is it's very sugary. The less sweet the sesame chicken is, I think the better it is most of the time. My wife probably thinks the opposite. She loves everything very, very sugary and very sweet. I do not. I like savory and salty. But sesame chicken is that nice little balance point, you know. I don't it's, think I've ever, like, judged a sesame chicken for how sweet it is. Never sometimes really they're too sweet. Sometimes they're too sweet. I don't know if I've ever had too sweet sesame chicken. Yeah, I will say, man, there was we moved away from our favorite Chinese spot. It was uh, it was near our old apartment. Mm -hmm. We maybe go there like once a year when we're really craving it. Uh, and that sesame chicken is so good. And moving away from that apartment made us very very sad just because we missed that that. Yeah, I was Chinese gonna say place. that's always very sad when you have to move away from like the one. We were regulars, dogs. Spots. They knew my number. They knew oh. my order. I didn't know to sit. The usual, yes. Oh, It'll be no. there soon. And then one day we just out of the blue stopped calling. You know? Do you ever think about it from their perspective? That's sad. It's like you broke up with them and it's just like left a them breakup. Red. It's really, really sad. Uh, tonight though, the place we were ordering from didn't have sesame chicken. We got chicken fried rice. Always, if you've got like, let's say you've got three people, right? Mm -hmm. And you want to be getting like two entrees, but you're worried that's not going to be quite enough. Uh, it is like, I think a, a side of fried rice is perfect. You know, you just like get two on three people, you get two entrees and some chicken fried rice or some shrimp fried rice. This place had pork belly fried rice, which we didn't try. Cause I think it could be really good or it could be horrible. Um, yeah. and we weren't ready for that variance tonight, but I am, but now that I try their chicken fried rice, I'm, I'm big on trying it because it was very mm -hmm. good. I think, uh, uh, a meat fried or vegetable fried rice. Perfect for that. Like little side dish that you get mm -hmm. you know what i mean agreed that's bigly i also like to have 
a bit of rice with every chicken bite. Yes. I don't like to eat just straight chicken. Like, I like to mix the two together and yep. just kind of get a mix of everything. Like, there's vegetables or egg. Kind of get a mixture of everything. So every bite's kind of different, but kind of the same. I love white rice. I love it. Uh, if I have the choice between fried rice and white rice, I'm going white white rice every mm. time. There's something about it, man. Sometimes when we like we make rice and I've got leftovers, I'll just eat the rice. I'll eat it cold sometimes. I just love That's it. That's a little weird. I love it that much. I don't know what it is, but I love it. I used to be that way with the rice, but I think it's kind of fallen off for me as of late. All right, I'm getting question marks in the chat, man. Unlucky. Yeah, that is. What you said. First of all, I would first of all, look. Cold. If okay, I would prefer it warmed up, but sometimes I don't feel like it. Okay. What? I don't. It's a lot of work, you know. Okay, it's not that much work, but like. Okay, That's the look biggest, at this. Like first world problem I've ever. All right, think about it this way. Think about it this way. I've got rice left over in my rice cooker, right? And it's yeah. not enough to put in a Tupperware container and put in the fridge. I'll just eat it. Like, you know, it, it's it's definitely cold. It's been sitting out for a little bit. But I don't want to take it out of the rice cooker, heat it up in the microwave or in a pan or something like that. And while I'm trying to clean up, like, I'll just, like, I'll just eat it real quick. And then it's and then I can just wash the rice cooker. You know what I mean? Come on, that no, can't be that weird. I don't know what you mean. Okay, Honestly. Barra, you're telling me last piece of pizza. Okay, it's been sitting out. It's a little bit cold. It's in it's in the the box. You don't want to put the whole box in the fridge. You don't want to eat you, like, but you could just eat that piece of pizza now. Just eat it cold, right? You I'm just, not a fan of cold food a lot of times, sir. I'm kind of a bad person to ask about this. Well, like cold food that you normally eat hot. Sorry. Okay. And for the record, Padme asks in the chat, uh, it is left out cold, not refrigerated cold. If my rice is refrigerated, I will heat it up. But okay. if it's like like last night, we made we made some rice, sat out for a little bit, came back, I just ate it. It was delicious. That's not as bad. I thought you were talking about straight out of the fridge. No, 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 no. It's like not like this. ice cold. <laughs> okay. All right. It's just like it's it's, it's like room temp. Still a little weird for me, but not as weird. Maybe try it like, out. Man. I thought you, you were talking like you're too lazy to do it. I thought you just meant I'm taking a big bowl of rice out of the fridge no, and just taking no. it to wherever I am and just spooning it into my mouth. Though I would try that is what I'm saying. I love white rice that much, man. I do. That's that's weird. When my mom, when I was little, my mom would make me uh, white rice with just like a little bit of butter and salt. And that would be like a little that. snack. It is so good. Okay, that is actually delicious, and that's one of my childhood snacks as well. Yes, sir. Is, like, having some rice, salt and pepper, and, like, cheese, butter, ham, like, whatever you want to throw oh, in there. Oh, that sounds good. Just, bro, it's actually delicious. It's kind of like, like hash browns, but yeah. with a little Asian flavor. Instead of potatoes, mm -hmm. it's rice. You know what I mean? It is actually so delicious, man. You will feel <sighs> right at home. Man, that sounds it's really so good. good. Dude, oh, like those little... Water. I know, man, that sounds so good. Like those little <laughs> ham cubes that you get from like yeah. Waffle House hash browns, like those oh. and some rice. Oh, okay, I'm so hungry. Bro. All right, yeah, we're going to get food. That's it. That We have to stop the podcast. Bear and I oh. are going to eat. Thanks for watching. Make sure you guys are checking out Prediction and all their other shows. They, cr they cross a bunch of different esports. So make sure you're checking those out. Uh, make sure you check out Bear's Twitch stream. Twitch.tv slash Barracuda, two R's, two C's, two D's. <laughs> I was getting ready. I, I had your back. And, and of Thank course, Twitch.tv slash aggro is the place to go with all of your prime subs and extra money that you mm -hmm. want to donate. Of course. I mean, we're talking about it. He's buying a house. Buying a house. You got to help it out. All right. Yeah, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, we'll see you next week here on the Backliners. Barracuda, go. Bye. All right. Not bad. Thank you.